Hello again friends, my name is Katie and I'm part of the education team here at Zoo Montana. For today's video in the camouflage series, we're covering one of my favorite kinds of camouflage, disruptive coloration. This type of coloration relies on almost creating an illusion, or at the very least making it difficult to pick out the outline of an animal. Zebra species are a very common example of this. With their black and white stripes and the fact that they tend to live in herds, it can be difficult for a predator to pick out one particular individual to hunt. In a similar way, scarlet macaws use their bright coloration to not only use it as concealing coloration when they're seated on branches, they often look like flowers or bright tropical colored fruits. But when a predator spooks the flock, that's when their disruptive coloration comes into play. They are also social animals like the zebra species, and so a whole flock of bright, colorful animals constantly moving around makes it hard for the predators to pick out one individual to hunt. Predators can also take advantage of disruptive coloration, including tigers. The six tiger subspecies live across a variety of habitats, from dry forests to wet subtropical jungles and even to snowy mountains. But regardless of habitat, they all share the orange and white body with black stripes. This disruptive coloration is useful for a couple of reasons. For one, in many of the habitats where they live, there are tall grasses or shorter trees whose shadows can make picking out a striped shape very difficult indeed. However, to us humans, it can still be pretty easy to pick out an orange and white and black animal when they're surrounded by greenery. So why is this type of camouflage useful to tigers? Well, it all has to do with the eyes, or rather what's not in the eyes. Most humans, along with some of our primate relatives, are trichromatic, which means that we can see colors across three types of cones, red, blue, and yellow, which in turn means that we can see colors like orange, green, and purple. However, this is a rare ability among most mammals. Most mammals are dichromatic, meaning they can see colors across usually blue and yellow cones only. This is important because most tiger's prey are things like boar and deer, who are dichromatic, which means they can only see things across blue, green, and yellow spectrum for the most part. Here's what we see with our trichromatic cones, and here is what the deer or boar or most other mammals would see. Just a green and striped shape amongst a bunch of other green and spotty and striped shapes. So not only do the stripes help them disrupt their outline in the shadows, but their bright orange color, to us, is merely green to most of their prey. Now it's your turn. Think of an animal that uses disruptive coloration that's not mentioned in this video, and using what you know of adaptations, genetics, and natural selection, make a hypothesis as to why or how you think that animal developed that kind of camouflage. There are probably many correct answers, because as usual, biology is complicated. We'll see you next time.